stand, please. Listen, the Lord calls out to us, offering life. Walk in the paths of God's commandments with delight. Join together in joyful hearts, sing our opening hymn, leaning on the everlasting arms.
come to God through his son, Jesus Christ. Let us pass the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. Turn to our seats. I invite the ushers to come forward. Anticipated the morning off. Let's remember that God has blessed us in so many ways, despite the inflation, the numerous bills, and the troubles around the world. We still are blessed.
you, that your kingdom may shine through them, that your love may be shown through them, and that each and every one of us may come to know you more deeply, to love you more dearly, and to love others as you have loved us. Amen. Now let's join together in our next hymn, How Great Thou Art.
The Old Testament lesson this morning comes from Psalm 119, verses 33 through 40. It's a devotional on the Word of God. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread. For your ordinances are good. I have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. This is the word of the Lord. So, at the back of your bulletin, you will see an announcement, but I wanted to make the announcement this morning because I am very excited about this. On October 26th, we are going to be having a community event. It's going to be hosted by the church and the preschool and a couple of other community organizations as well as the lowriders are going to be here. We are going to have a trunk or treat fall festival. So the lowriders are going to be here. They're going to be handing out candy. We're going to have a cakewalk. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to have just lots and lots of fun, music, just a great time. We're inviting our school that we partner with, Castle Park School, elementary school, and we are going to celebrate fall and we're going to have a little trunk or treat and just have a good time. What we need from you all, there's a couple things that you can provide. Don't, not all of the things any one of you can provide. So some of you can provide prayer. Some of you can provide some, a little bit of money to help fund some of the things that it will cost to do. You know, we're going to, Abby's going to be here doing music, so uh, playing music, so we, you know, so just a couple of things, food trucks, things like that. Number three, you can also provide peanut free candy. Now, here's the thing if you go to Costco, there's two different kinds of candy things you can buy. You can buy the one that has chocolate, and that one has peanuts in it. So you can't bring that one unless you take all of the chocolate pieces out, and unless you take the Reese's and Snickers out and keep them for yourself. Or you can buy the non-chocolate one, which has no peanuts in it. It's not candy I like as much, but it'll be okay. Kids like super sweet candy. Um, we also need volunteers. Volunteers includes helping with uh, making cakes and cookies and things for the cakewalk. It could be volunteering for that day. The Boy Scouts and the Cub Scouts are going to be volunteering. It is just going to be so exciting because one of the things that I keep thinking about and praying about is that when people drive by True Lewis to Press, that they see and know that it's like a lively place where things are happening, where NA meetings are happening, where Boy Scout and Cub Scout meetings are happening, where the Senior Feeling Fit Club is happening, where all of these things are taking place because that we at Chula Vista Press care about our community and care about the welfare of our community. And so we're going to have fun together. So if you can help, let me know, and we'll get you plugged in to wherever we can get you plugged in. So, or donate candy. We'll have a little, next week we're going to have a little sign-up sheet in the bulletin where you can sign up for bringing candy or whatever you've decided, whatever way you've decided to volunteer. Sound good? Okay. I'm excited. October 26th from 5 to 8. Oh, set up and clean up. We always need help with those things that we always forget to ask. So set up and clean up. So, a pastor of a church was a new pastor of the church. And the new pastor of the church had a little conflict with them. i got to decide where I can stand so I can see everyone. There we go. I think that's better. Um, had a conflict with the music minister. And the conflict with the music minister led from staff meetings. And it started to, like, trickle in to the worship services. And so it, one week the pastor was preaching about how to dedicate our life to service. And 
What did the organist pick for music that week? I shall not be moved. <laughs> then they preached about, then he preached about tithing and giving. And what did the music minister pick? Jesus paid it all. <laughs> the next week, he, the pastor preached about gossip. I love to tell the story. The following week, the pastor shared out of like sadness that they were thinking about resigning because they were struggling with the ministry that they were doing there. And the music minister chose the story, the song, Oh, Why Not Tonight? <laughs> and finally, the next week, after much prayer and petition, the pastor had decided they were going to resign. They were done fighting with the music minister. They were done with ministry there. And they shared the congregation with a heart full of love that God had called them there, but that God was now calling them away somewhere else. And the music minister picked, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> now, Dan, I'm very grateful that we have no conflict like that. But... Today, we're going to talk about the church in conflict, and what do we do when we don't always agree with one another? Now, I know when I normally preach, I preach about, like, let's talk about how we can be in the community and what, how we're supposed to be the light of Jesus Christ in the community. So why am I talking about conflict, internal conflict? Number one, because it was the next passage in the lectionary for what not in Matthew's Gospel. But number two, it's because we also have to think about what our witness represents when someone walks into the church. So imagine that you are fighting with one of your church people, one of your church friends, and you used to always sit next to each other in church. And now you are fighting over how to use the budget. And so now you sit on opposite sides of the church. When someone walks into the sanctuary, they're going to feel that conflict. So when Jesus was setting up the early church, he thought that it was very important to have these conversations about how to live in community together as the body of Christ. And so we're going to talk about what you do when you have a conflict with another believer in the community of faith that you're together with. So we're going to turn to Matthew's Gospel, the 18th chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. And it says this. So, oh, I want to let you know I forgot this too, but this passage is sandwiched between two very important parables. So the parable before this is the parable of the lost sheep. The parable where Jesus goes out to find the one and leaves the nine one. And then following this, it's the parable of the unforgiving servant. So it's the, the parable where the gentleman is forgiven his debt by the, his rich master, but then his friend owes him a debt and he says, no, you have to pay it. And the guy can't pay it back and he gets thrown in prison. And so it... It is sandwiched between these two passages of, about how the kingdom of God works. And so Jesus is talking about how the kingdom of God works when systems are broken down as well. So here we go. Matthew's Gospel, the 15, 18th chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. Okay, so Jesus says, someone sins against you, if someone, like, hurts you, if someone does something to break the community, to break their relationship, go and tell that person. What does he not say? Does he not say, and on the way, tell your friend about how that person hurt you? He says, no, go tell that person. And if that person, you resolve it, you apologize, everything gets resolved, then you've regained one. <clears throat> so, then he goes on and says, but if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed.
confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. So two or three witnesses was a very big part of Jewish culture. The first listeners of this would have known that this was a way in which you solve conflict, was to bring two or three other corroborating witnesses alongside you to solve that conflict. Um, finally, if the member refuses to listen to them, so you've had a conversation with them, nothing is resolved, you bring in some other leaders of the church, nothing is resolved, then if the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the whole church, to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such be one as to a Gentile or a tax collector. Now Jesus is saying that if, they, if there's a conflict and they're not listening to you, and they're not listening to a group of other people, and then they're not listening to the whole church, the likelihood is they no longer want to be in that community of faith. And he's saying, that's okay, they're no longer in that community of faith. And that's okay. He's saying, it's okay. So truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, I tell you, if, you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. This is the word of the Lord. So, in my first call, I had, um, I was the associate, I was the associate for youth ministry, I was 25 years old, and I was called and I was very excited, I was going to change the world, and I came in with much gusto, you've met me, I, I do that anywhere I go, but I came in with lots of gusto and lots of naivete, and it turned out that I was making some people mad because I was trying to change things without having conversations with people. I, was, I saw something that needed to be changed and instead of knowing how a system worked, I just tried to, <laughs> tried to bulldoze the system to make it work in a healthier way. This is not a healthy way to deal with things. So what happened was, Parents started getting mad at me, kids started getting mad at me. And listen, I didn't get much chance before parents and kids started getting mad at me because I had been the, I was the associate and they didn't have an interim before me. So there was about three weeks between the previous beloved associate youth pastor being called and me starting. And everybody loved Steve. Where he was, youth ministry happened. And so what would happen is parent, the kids would be so mad because I said something at youth group that night they didn't like or because we were going on a mission trip they didn't want to go on or because I thought we shouldn't do a certain activity. So they would get on the phone to Steve and call and talk to him for an hour about what was going on. And this went on for months and months, and I had no idea what was going on. I could feel that there was this internal conflict. I was not smart enough to realize my own place in it at the time. And, but then I realized that the kids were, the other pastor I was working with said, do you know that the kids are calling Steve? And I said, no. And I said, do you mind doing something for me because I don't have a relationship with this guy? Can you call him and nicely ask him that if the kids call him to say, you should probably talk to Elizabeth about this? But what continued to happen for at least another six months was they would have those same long conversations and then at the end, he would say, maybe you should have talked to Elizabeth about this. And it was because, I get it, he had loved these kids and like loved on them and he had been called to another church and he still had a relationship with them, so I get it. But I also get how it broke down the community of faith because when people had conflicts, they weren't coming to me, and I hadn't earned their trust either, but they weren't coming to me to deal with their conflicts, they were going to someone else to deal with them. And so for four years, I was only there for four years, it was like an uphill battle of, earning trust and earning the trust of the community 
And it turned out that I really had it, and that's why I ended up leaving. But I saw how parking lot conversations of people being frustrated after a session meeting or, or a committee meeting, people would talk about something and agree with it and then go in the parking lot and say, talk about what a terrible decision it was. And they did that for everyone, every committee. It was, a very, it was kind of a toxic church. Um, but the idea that they didn't deal with the conflict in the way in which we're supposed to deal with internal conflict. And I get it. When there is conflict, I want to avoid it. I want to avoid it with a 10-foot pole, maybe more than that. Because it's hard. It is hard when you're arguing with someone. It is hard when you're not in step with one another. But what Jesus is saying is that we as the church need to be, and we as believers need to be in step with one another, in the body with one another. And I think Paul goes on and talks about the reason why that is. And he talks about it in, the, in his letter to the Romans, uh, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 4th verse. He says, For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one, to another, one of, of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry in ministry. The teacher in teaching. The exhorter in exhortation. The giver in generosity. The leader in diligence. The compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. The reason why we are to deal with conflict and to deal with it correctly is because we are one body that is supposed to work together. Now, I know all of us have had situations where maybe one part of our body is not working correctly and it throws off the whole system. Sometimes I get a little pinched nerve in my shoulder, and if that gets pinched, then it throws off the other arm, because I'm using this arm for all of my strength. And I get it, because if one part of the body is in conflict, it throws the rest of the body into conflict. And we, as the people of God, are supposed to work together to break down that conflict to be honest with one another, and to be honest with one another because we acknowledge that we are the body of Christ. And also to acknowledge that we are not going to always get along. We are not going to always agree. But what we have to agree to is that even when we don't always agree, that we are going to honor and respect one another. It's like what we asked at the end of session meetings, that if there was some sort of conflict that happened, that everyone is in agreement when we leave, that that is how we're moving forward. That there aren't parking lot conversations about how someone bullied someone else is making this decision because this is, that's not how it works. And those things are not going to be included in the session discussion that Tommy sends out with the blast, but rather, we as a community we as a community of leaders have decided that this is what there's going, what we're going to do to move forward. And even if it was a hard decision, we are going to be a united front because we are one body together. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not, it's not easy. But what our role and responsibility is is to covenant with one another to be brave enough to bring our conflicts to one another. To bring our struggles to one another so that someone doesn't have to leave the faith, leave the community. 
because they're so mad that something didn't get dealt with, because they're so sad, because their heart has been broken. But rather, that we can bring our conflict and figure out a way to love each other and be one body, even if that conflict is not resolved. Because there are going to be times, and there will continue to be times, when we are the body of Christ and we disagree about things. But our responsibility is to love one another through that conflict and through that difference. So, how in the world do we do it? Well, I always think of one of the biggest church conflicts that has ever happened in our recent, not so recent history, and that was the Reformation. It was like a giant church fight. And what happened is Martin Luther saw some things that were wrong with the church, and the first thing he did was he took it to his bishop, and the bishop was like, no, I can't, no, I can't do anything with that. And then, he, after he took it to the bishop, then he took it to the cardinals. The cardinals were like, no, you're wrong, we're not dealing with that. And finally, he took it all the way to the pope, and, they, and the pope said, you're wrong, we're not dealing with that. And so he thought that the only thing that he could do was to write his 95 Thesis and to nail it to the door of the Wittenberg Church. That was 500 years ago. In, well, 500 and five years ago, 506 years ago. Um, it was in 1517. And so for years, the Reformed Church and the Catholic Church fought. But as that 500-year anniversary was coming up, the, the Protestant Church in Wittenberg decided that they wanted to work towards reconciliation. So they, and they wanted to do it in an ecumenical way. So they sat down with their brothers and sisters in the Roman Catholic Church and said, how can we celebrate this 500-year anniversary knowing the extraordinary conflict that it created 500 years ago? But they worked, in preparation, they worked for five years together to work to be one body, one community, acknowledging the brokenness that came out of what broke the church, but also acknowledging each community's part in it. And so for the 500th anniversary of the nailing of the 95 Theses on the door, I want to remember the name of the church so you can, uh, the name of the community, the Lutheran Roman Catholic Commission on Unity met together and they had a united service and they continue to have united ecumenical things in Wittenberg even today in 2023 because instead of focusing on the things that divided them, they focused on the thing that united them, which is Jesus Christ. That that's what calls all believers together. And that is Jesus Christ. Is that it is not the thing that keeps us away from each other, but that Jesus should theoretically keep us together. And so that's why I love our new mission statement. Because it reminds us of the thing that unites us. It is that we are to love God and love others. And that means loving others even when we're in the middle of conflict with them. Even when we don't like them very much because we're fighting about something. That we are called to center our lives around loving God and loving others. Because that is what unites us.
Would you pray with me? God of grace and steadfast love, we thank you for your commandments, which order our lives together. We thank you for calling us to live honorably with one another and pray for your grace as we try to do all that is required of us. Increase in us, we pray, the capacity to love you and our neighbors without reserve and to love even those who harm us, not half-heartedly, but with our whole hearts. Bring before you the cares, the concerns, and the joys that occupy us. We remember those that are at odds with one another in families, in neighborhoods, or offices, and even in the church. We pray for nation and nations in the midst of internal and external struggle and conflict. Teach us, O oh God, to seek nonviolent ways towards resolution. Help us to speak the truth and to listen with understanding when perspectives are far apart. We pray for love to bring peace into every troubled heart. And we remember before you those who have physical needs today, people who are hungry and thirsty, people who are exhausted by the demands of work or caregiving, people who are sick or undergoing surgery, people who live with chronic pain. Bring relief and rest, we pray. And we remember those weighed down with the needs of the heart and soul, a worry that keeps them awake at night, grief that accompanies us everywhere we go, depression that clouds us, or an addiction that grips us. Lift all these burdens with the light of your peace and your presence, we pray. Sustain us over the long journey towards health and give us trust in you, ourselves, and those who love us. And we remember before you not only our cares, but also our joys. A birthday celebrated, an anniversary enjoyed, new beginnings, a baby born, a new job, a new relationship, a new year for our deacons and the wonderful ministry that they do. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of laughter, for enduring friendship and for cherished memories. We thank you that with you, there is always a new beginning, a way where there is no way, hope beyond hope, and life beyond death. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of forever. Amen. And now let us stand as we sing our closing hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing.
My name is Arturo Flores, I'm part of True Pay 100. We are currently selling popcorn right outside the... Did it time? We're trying... We're trying to raise some popcorn so that way we can go to Switzerland. And we're hoping if you guys would like to support us, buy some popcorn, make a small donation, anything really helps. Um, or if not uh, Switzerland, we're trying to go to Florida Sea Base, one of those two. Uh, we're just trying to have some fun. <laughs> Thank you. So go out, support our Boy Scout troop, and if you remember from last week, 70%, is that the number, Ben? 70% of the money that they sell goes back to the Boy Scout troop, which is awesome. So, my friends, all of us are going to have conflict. All of us are going to struggle because we're not always going to get along. But what Jesus is calling us to do is to love one another. And the way in which we love one another is by facing those things that might hurt one another and facing them with love. And now go in the grace, peace, and love of God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.